Hello, today as we prepare for our final project, we're going to be talking about visual argument. We've focused a lot this semester on how to make an argument through our language, but when we think about the amount of argument that goes on in the everyday world, largely through things like advertisement or other visual media, a lot of argumentation happens with what we see. For instance, consider this famous advertisement. Think about how the simple image with only a few words is trying to convince people to join the army beyond just telling them that they want them to join. What specifically in this image is evoking a certain feeling? And think about our ethos, pathos, and logos discussion in terms of the argumentative appeals. One thing you might notice is the sense of ethos that's coming from this person. This is Uncle Sam, a symbol of America, so that automatically gives it a level of ethos for a lot of people, a credibility. He's older, and in this culture we typically have a view that an older person has some experience, has some wisdom, and that gains ethos as well. And then, of course, his clothing is reminiscent of the United States flag, red, white, and blue, which once again is tapping into both ethos, but also pathos and emotional appeal. This ties into getting the person to want to join the military, especially as he's pointing directly at the viewer, pointing to them, saying they want them to join, not just in general, they want people to join the army. This is why this was a very effective ad. Consider another advertisement. This also has very few words, but consider for a moment what makes this appealing to people. You might have thought that even though it's very different than Uncle Sam having Santa Claus, a beloved character with the Coca-Cola product might inspire people to also want to use it. This one is very much a pathos-driven appeal, the emotional connection with happiness and thinking about Christmas is definitely what Coca-Cola is going for here. But also consider the color, the color of the Coca-Cola logo, the color that Santa's wearing in the picture definitely ties that all together for the viewer. In that split second it takes them to look at this ad, it's already playing at many different levels, creating that connection in your brain between the product, happiness, etc. We can especially compare that to an older version of Santa Claus in old cultures where he doesn't look the same way, but even though other artists came up with the image that we're more familiar with, Coca-Cola has really helped popularize it even more by using it in so many of their ads, tying in that whole red color with their product. So once again, visual elements can absolutely help make an argumentative appeal to the viewer. But you can also do this with more information than just a buzz line, just an advertising pitch. For instance, you can do it with research. Here is some research that was represented visually by a former student. Take a moment and read through this and see if you can try to guess what you think the thesis was that this student was going for. If you are still thinking, you can pause, but I'm going to point out a few key features of this visual argument. First of all, one piece of evidence that the student had found for their argument essay was about pregnancies carried on or terminated, or aborted is another name for that, after the baby was diagnosed with Down syndrome. As you can see, 90% of mothers, when they discover that their baby has Down syndrome, according to the diagnosis, get an abortion, and only 10% carry on the pregnancies. So that's one piece of data that the student found. But this other one has to do with testing. And as we see here, this was very important context that the student provided. As we move to the right of the bar graph, the prenatal testings get more dangerous. They can harm the baby, causing deformation, or can cause the mother to have a miscarriage. So blood testing, drawing blood from the mother's arm, isn't really dangerous to a child in utero, in the uterus. However, the accuracy for Down syndrome diagnosis is less than 60%. So it's only about half right, half wrong. Ultrasound, using sound waves to see the baby, is definitely more, more accurate. It's also not very invasive, but it's still not foolproof. Then we have two tests, amniocentesis and chorionic villus testing, which are definitely 
close to completely accurate in diagnosing, but as the student pointed out, these are definitely more dangerous because they involve in the case of amniocentesis, for example, sticking a needle very close to the baby to draw out amniotic fluid. As you can imagine, this is something that might cause more harm uh, or has more of a chance to cause harm to the child. So if you're getting close to perfect readings, but you're causing potential damage to the child, as you can see, the student is going for some argument. So based on the fact that most people get a, an abortion when they have a Down syndrome diagnosis, and there's definitely questions about how to get that diagnosis in the first place, this student, on a very specific thesis, was calling for people not to use Down syndrome diagnosis in their decision making of their child. It was not a general argument about abortion or anything like that, but a very focused argument. And as you can see, these pieces of evidence, which also came up in her full essay, can be boiled down here into a visual argument to make a very specific point in a much shorter way using that visual argument. Another example, very different topic, has to do with celebrity, uh, celebrity jail sentences and time for DUIs. This person shows that in terms of the time sentenced for these crimes, Khloe Kardashian got that many hours uh, that she was supposed to serve in prison, but the actual time spent was very little next to nothing. Same with Nicole Ritchie, got assigned this, and yet this is all she served. Lindsay Lohan, in a 24-hour sentence, so supposed to serve 24 hours, uh, only served this little bit. So this student was talking about how celebrities need to be held accountable for their crimes more. And once again, these visual arguments can help show that. And another example, I think this is a very interesting chart, it's showing maternity leave paid by the government in various countries. As you can see in Canada, nearly a year is paid by the government for maternity leave, so having the mother be able to stay home and start raising the child and still getting a salary. France, it's less than Canada, but still a good amount, around 18 weeks. Australia and Spain both have decent maternity leaves too. United States, this flat square over here is at zero. So the student's argument about the need to have maternity leave in the United States is pretty clear, right? Argumentative point shown through evidence. Now, like I said, this is actually a very good chart to use for this part, but as you'll also notice, there's some issues with this graphic. Can you note what those are? If you notice some of the grammatical errors, such as with countries or untied states, you see that even though the visual element might be really good, the little language that's there, if it's not pristine, is definitely going to take away from your own ethos. So when you are coming up with your own charts and graphs for a final project, I want you to both think about the visual argument element and making sure that the data is used in a way that's compelling, but also pay attention still to your own ethos, your own credibility.